$3 trillion. That's hard to imagine. How many companies do you think are valued at $3 trillion? Two, Microsoft and Apple. Microsoft and Apple. No company had reached that level before them, and it's only very recently. Apple reached it in 2022, Microsoft in 2024. What could bring down a company worth $3 trillion? Not much, but not much is enough. A company's valuation is an estimate based on its finances, reputation and long-term strategy, but also on factors over which it has no control. The economic context, political decisions, a pandemic, or even worse, the market. A company's main job is to convince you to buy its product and not that of its competitor. But what happens when its main competitor is itself? This year, the global smartphone market hit a 10-year low because consumers consider that the best smartphone they could have is the one they already have. The iPhone's biggest competitor is the billion iPhones already sold. But there's good news for Apple. People are keeping their smartphones longer. And as they keep it longer, they can invest more money in the next one. So the only growth we're seeing is at the high end. 71% of high-end smartphones sold are iPhones. This explains why, despite high prices, Apple became the world's biggest seller of smartphones this year, overtaking Samsung for the first time. The other side of the coin is that the iPhone is not just a major part of smartphone sales, it's its main source of revenue. More than half of Apple's sales are iPhone related, that's 52% of its sales. You know what the second most profitable product is? Services, Apple Music, iCloud, etc which represent 22% of their annual revenue, the only one that's growing. The problem is that subscriptions to these services are partly motivated by the purchase of an iPhone. So 70% of the sales of the world's second largest company are based on a single product, which still shines, but in an ashen market where a single spark could set it alight again. What the smartphone market lacks is the arrival of a technology that would transform the consumer experience and reverse the sales trend. And we know what that technology is. It is estimated that the year 1024 will be decisive for smartphones with artificial intelligence, which should account for 40% of market share within three years. The latest smartphones from Google and Samsung are already equipped with them and new products built for AI are starting to appear. Meanwhile, guess how many times artificial intelligence has been mentioned at Apple's latest conferences? Zero. Not a single mention. It would seem that Apple is so far behind that it's panicking to the point of investing a billion dollars to catch up. Whatever your hand, when a disruptive technology comes to the table, the cards are reshuffled. What made Apple the world's second largest company was the iPhone. What could cause its downfall is also the iPhone, unless that's part of the plan. This video is in collaboration with Odoo, which lets you create a website for your business free of charge and without any technical skills in just four steps. Define your business sector and your objective. Sell more, inform your customers or develop your brand. Click on the color scheme that best represents you. Add pages or features such as about blog or online store. Last but not least, choose one of the proposed themes and the artificial intelligence will build your site based on your choices. Once the layout has been generated, you can customize it by dragging content blocks to add text, shapes, animations or photos. If you lack inspiration, artificial intelligence will also help you write your texts or improve them by shortening them or making them more professional. In just a few clicks, you'll have a site tailored to your business that's ready for publication. Odoo is much more than a site creator. It's a complete suite of applications for managing your business. The first application is offered for life. Site hosting and support are included on an unlimited basis and the personalized domain name is offered for one year. The Odoo link is in the description. Thanks to them for supporting this video. There are two ways to integrate AI into our lives. The first is to make a brand new product designed for it. This results in devices with less or no screen and no visible application. Gadgets that unify our experience around a single interface that we control with one main mode of interaction, voice. There's the Rabbit RI, a sort of Tamagotchi that uses artificial intelligence to interact with apps and sites for you to order an Uber or simply ask questions. Then there are the iPins I've already mentioned in a video, a wearable device that sees what you see to answer your questions about your surroundings, send messages and so on. I don't believe in these solutions for two reasons. The first is that they may be viable one day, but not today. Artificial intelligence language models are very promising and have already personally changed my life, but I wouldn't trust them blindly for the world because they're subject to bias and hallucination. Imagine you ask them for a political news item and they invent something that never happened or distort a quote. The problem is that this happens very often. I work with AI every day and I'm constantly checking what it tells me because I know I can't take its word for it. How can you check what it's telling you if you don't even have an interface to do so? For me, this thought alone is enough to make these gadgets unfit to be our main window on the world. But the second reason I don't believe in them is just as important. The makers of these gadgets want to solve a problem that doesn't exist. People love their smartphones and have no desire to get rid of them 
and rightly so. A smartphone isn't just a tool. It's an essential part of people's lives that requires a screen and apps. If it has become indispensable, it's not because we haven't tried anything else, it's because the format is practical. So in the short term, I don't think this type of device represents any competition for Apple. At best, there'll be an accessory on top of a smartphone, but even that requires you to want to carry so many different products with you. In my opinion, the best way to integrate AI into people's lives is to do it in products they already use. So Apple's biggest threat remains the same as it has for the last decade, Android. Samsung announced it was making the first smartphone of the AI era. And what they've done is interesting. The Galaxy S24 comes with a host of intelligent features that, taken together, will enhance the user experience. From the browser, it's possible to summarize the content of an article. The keyboard corrects spelling and grammatical errors and lets you change the tone of a text to make it more professional or friendly. You can make a call in one language and ask the AI to translate what you say into another with a time delay. You can colorize a black and white photo, remove an element from an image, move it around, or crop the photo and generate scenery to fill the empty space. Or you can circle an area of your screen to search from the image. You're on Insta, you see someone wearing a stylish sweater, you circle it and ask the AI where it's from without leaving Insta. These aren't functions that will change your life, but if they work well, they'll be very practical. And I don't think AI necessarily needs to be revolutionary to drastically change the smartphone interface and do everything for us. I believe that at first it's just practical. By dint of little things, details, it will end up representing a big change. It's not exclusive to Samsung. Some of them already exist on Google and the majority will arrive on Android and consumers will soon see what AI can do for them. So what's Apple up to? In their latest developer conference, they didn't mention AI once. And yet many of the new features they presented can be likened to AI. The photo app's ability to recognize your pets, improved autocorrection and word prediction, the AirPods automatic volume adjustment based on your environment, the accessibility feature that clones your voice. Any other brand would have talked about AI, but Apple doesn't once. Why? There's a technical and marketing reason. When speaking to developers, Apple prefers to use the term machine learning, which is a branch of AI that is often technically more correct. When they talk to consumers, they talk about magic. They'll sell the magic of your phone, which summarizes what you should do after a call you've just ended. The magic of the playlist that adapts to the mood they detect in your messages. The magic of emails that suggest personalized responses. The magic of notifications that remind you to reply to a message you've left in view. They won't sell AI, but the experience it enables. In Apple's eyes, marketing used by everyone is just another echo that won't resonate with anyone. Artificial intelligence is more a marketing term than a technological one, used by any company wanting to be part of the future, but it evokes neither the future nor the premium. In fact, it's been six years since the iPhone was equipped with a chip specially designed for automatic learning. It's this chip that enables Face ID to adapt to facial changes, such as the growth of a beard. I've never had this problem. In the last 2007 years, Apple has bought more artificial intelligence startups than Microsoft, Meta, or Google. Apple accelerated things last year by integrating a neural engine optimized for algorithms into the iPhone XS Pro, mainly used in photo processing, text prediction, automatic transcription of voice messages and podcasts. But above all, it's preparing for the future. What everyone is waiting for is a complete overhaul of Siri. But that might not happen for another two years. Because Apple has very different philosophical stakes from OpenAI, Microsoft, or Google. Apple can't offer artificial intelligence like the others because their operation requires sending all your requests to servers to process them, which would go against Apple's commitment to confidentiality. The problem is that artificial intelligence is all about predicting you. And to do that, it needs to know you, how you talk, what you like. It needs to know who you are. The more personal the data, the more sensitive it is, and the more it needs to be processed directly on the device. But a language model comes with 100 billion parameters, which requires a lot of computing power. So it runs today in data centers with far more power than an iPhone, because it's hard to imagine doing otherwise. But Apple researchers have published an article in which they explain how they managed to run an artificial intelligence language model on a device with limited memory so we could see an iPhone 16 Fi or 7 7 powerful enough to run AI locally, which could be the Siri revolution. Apple may suffer in the short term from not feeding a discourse on a technology as transformative as artificial intelligence. But by conforming to others, they would be submitting to their performance. By pursuing their own trajectory, they seem to be competing only with themselves. Apple is probably behind the curve in demonstrating AI, but Apple always is. The Mac wasn't the first computer. The iPod wasn't the first Walkman. The iPhone wasn't the first smartphone. The AirPods weren't the first wireless headphones. But each of these products resonates today as the first of something. This constant rightness requires thought and time to achieve a sufficient convergence of technologies, to simplify complex uses and propose use cases that consumers hadn't even considered in the service of a global vision that won't be considered AI, but magic. Let's do a test. What lights up the room? 
You probably answered the light bulb because you're not thinking about electricity, you're thinking about what it powers. Yet the bulb is simply the product that converts the fascinating natural phenomenon of electrical energy into visible light. We only notice the energy around us when it's transformed into something we can perceive, like light. Artificial intelligence isn't the product, it's the energy, the driving force behind all future technological innovations. So far, everyone's playing with pebbles to see if they spark. And I must say, it's fascinating to watch. But it will end as soon as someone stops experimenting with artificial intelligence as a product, but as the energy that drives an entire ecosystem around it and turns on the lights. Thank you all. Thank you, Odu. That was Leo Duff.